Hey, hi, and welcome to my channel. This is gonna be my first video, so I hope it's not too bad. I'm gonna try my best to make it as entertaining and helpful as possible. So let's start with some introductions. My name is Manuel Camino. I am a Spanish creative and a digital artist known as Sidious. And in case you didn't have the chance to see any of my work, I'm gonna put a link in the description below and I'm gonna be displaying now some visuals so you can have a look. And with this video, what I would like to do is to show you how I make those visuals, how I try to do something that is a big passion for me, that is trying to collect some memories from my dreams and bring those memories back to life using some creative techniques that I'm gonna try to explain you. Um, and why I do this is because, I mean, it's amazing to look at your dreams again and to be able to share with other people. Um, so, I mean, that's why I do it. So if this is something that is exciting for you or um, it can be helpful somehow, okay, let's go and do this thing together. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Affinity Photo. And what I'm gonna try to do, I'm gonna try to explain you how I created a piece like this. But let me start by saying that uh, the name of this uh, visual, the name of this illustration is Koi. Koi is this type of fish that you can see here. It's very common in um, Asia, particularly in, um, I would say in China and in Japan. And this is basically a dream that I had a few days after what is an important day in Japan that is uh, it's called the Kodomo no Hi, or in other words, is the day of the children. So after that day and after seeing all the celebrations, I have this dream. In the dream, I could see this kid um, that was riding a massive a uh, koi fish and holding this flag, kind of like leading the, uh, this uh, revolution of nature or, you know, I don't know how to call it, or this march of nature. And what I found very interesting during the dream is that you will see things like these butterflies, um, and these frogs that they were in the same space than this fish. It looked kind of underwater, but it wasn't clear if they were flying or they were swimming. And I thought that was pretty interesting. So I wanted to, to create this composition out of that dream. But let's go a few steps back. This you're gonna see here, it's, it's like a collection of visuals that are going to be put together in what for me is my references. It's just my collection of references. And why this is so important? Because looking at this butterfly in all the details or looking at the shapes of this, you know, uh, koi fish and all the, the, the colors in the skin of, of the fish or some details here when it comes to the kimono, it, it helps me to remember and put details to those things I was seeing in the dream. Like for example, I remember it was some aquatic plants, but every single detail I, I will not recall. So looking at these photos, I know how those things were in a better detail. I can, it helps me to remember, or like for example, one thing it paid, I, I, it grabbed my attention during the dream was this type of hat that I saw before, um, wearing, um, uh, being, or, or being, uh, used in some decorations there in Japan and that the kid was wearing. So once I look at those references, sometimes I use those references in order to create this sketch or a sketch like this one. So you see in the sketch, I already am putting together some of the things that I saw. And then I try to, to have a composition that is attractive, that reflects what I saw in, in a manner that is, it has harmony 
and it's dynamic like in this case. In order to make it dynamic, what I did for a sample in, uh, with this sketch is that I try first of all to have, um, let me just increase the opacity here one second. Okay. So I try to have this, you know, main subject that is the kit that is, uh, right in the, right in the koi that it's kind of leading the group. And that's the way I remember. And I can remember as well, this beautiful red flag that was grabbing a lot of my attention through the dream. And what I did here, if you look at it, is that I'm going to be incorporating some of the other elements in such a way that they help to make the composition be dynamic on one side, but harmonic in another side. So for example, if you see, I'm using here, these two koi fish, they are going to follow the main, the leader that is right here. And by doing this, at the same time, I'm making the composition, you know, half movement and it's, it feels attractive, but it's balanced. You have an element here and you have an element here and you have a central element here, right? That is where most of the tension is going to go. And then if you see all the other elements that I'm creating, they always are somehow balancing and, and creating harmony uh, when it comes to the composition. So you see, I always going to be trying to balance the things out um, and trying to reflect the emotion and the feeling that I was having through the dream, that it was an emotion of, it was peaceful, but it was just exciting at the same time and something similar to this. So let's say once I have that thing done, I go to the next step that is going to, um, uh, to be creating some kind of 3D composition. So in order to do something like this, you can use free, uh, free, free D software like Blender. So it will cost you no money and you can use some, uh, free, um, assets that you can find. Like I found this, uh, this fish and these um, aquatic plants and so on. You don't need to start building, like taking this fish and start building from scratch or modeling or any of that. It's not necessary. And if you see, I tend to duplicate things. Like for example, here, I, I use the same fish for as the main one in the center and I duplicate it and then I, and I post the fish in a different way. And then I have it here and then I have it here. Or the, if you look at this, aquatic plan is the same one than this one. It's just the color is, is, is different from white to yellow and that's it, right? So why I do this 3D thing, you can ask, like why I don't go from the sketch straight away? The reason for that is because it's gonna give me, let me show you, it's gonna give me uh, three things that are amazing for me. So the number one, it's like information that is great. Number one thing is gonna help me with the perspective. So I'm going to be able to get like a very good perspective and I don't have to be worried about it. Like the 3D is giving me a real perspective. The number two thing is going to be proportions. So yeah, I'm going to get like a very good idea of how big or small things are going to be and I'm going to see it straight away. But the most important thing for me that's going to be number three is going to be lights and shadows. So why this lights and shadows thing is so important? Okay. If you look at this, by putting a light, I think I did it around here. I'm going to get a lot of amazing information that I'm going to be using uh, when I'm working on the illustration, I know where is the shadow. For example, you see the shadow here or this area, the, the thing is on the light or let's say, for example, when it comes to, comes to the kit, even though this, uh, I mean, this model that I'm using doesn't have any kimono or anything like that, but I'm going to be knowing that the light's going to be in this bar and then we're going to have shadow in this bar and so on. 
And that information for me is amazing. Besides that, as you can see, I don't even worry about putting texture. I mean, this one, for example, the butterfly was having the texture, fine. But um, in general, I don't really care about the texture because this uh, 3D um, elements are going to be like the canvas I'm going to be working on. So how I do this, let me show you. What I normally do is I create the background. Uh, many other creatives always tell me like, why you do the background first? That's probably the last thing you need to do. Well, I don't know. For me, I love to do the background. So I, I'm creating a space and uh, where I'm going to be um, illustrating or photo compositing or however you want to call it, um, where I feel comfortable and I feel good. So what I do, I will take that layer, that 3D layer, and I'm going to put it on top of my background. I, by doing this thing, I'm already having something, first of all, something nice to look at. And then what I do, I'm going to be taking textures. Let's say, for example, like you saw on the references, um, I will be taking textures from this koi face or textures from the butterfly or objects like this hat and so on. And I'm going to be applying that on top of this uh, 3D render that I got. By doing that, I'm going to get something like this. This is the next step where I'm going to have all those uh, 3D objects already with some texture on top. And besides that, what I'm going to be doing, it's painting on those objects as well to integrate and to fully dress this kind of skin on top of things. So let's say, for example, I'm going to show you, let me just, I will create a pixel layer and I'm going to, uh, let's say, let me reduce the opacity. Um, let's say, for example, this fish, right? I remembered that I was able to put the texture and, but I had to play with the colors. So I painted on top and then I realized how this fish was not having scales because the photo was not having that much detail. So basically, oh, let me just reduce the, um, the size. Okay. And then I was doing this like this, just literally painting the scales on top of you know, on top of the texture, creating an area with shadows. And then why not creating a light, a highlights, highlights area like this, right? And of course there's situations like, for example, when it comes to the kimono that you have to be painting more or the flag or so on. But basically what I do is just, I mix those painting techniques with um, something that is called photo bashing that basically is putting textures from photo on top of, um, on top of the surfaces. And then by doing this thing, then you just mix both things together. You're going to get something like this, but how do I make all this thing feel like this within the same space? Thanks to this group of layers that I normally call the atmosphere. So atmosphere is basically a collection of layers that I'm, that I'm going to put on top of everything that it will work like glue that makes the whole thing somehow kind of like come together and feel like they're all part of the same space. That's what I call it. The atmosphere. So if you look at those layers, it's going to be things like, for example, um, this, um, I call it orange, but it's more like a brownish that it will make the, the whole thing warmer or this lens flare and this uh, like rays of light. But basically it works pretty well. When you start using all those things, you are going to give it the, the look that everything is within the same space. So pretty much that's it. Um, I mean, um, this is an overall 
and then you're gonna be getting something like this that I hope you guys like it. Um, and that's it. Hey, so you made it until the end of the video. Thank you so much for that. I hope it was inspiring. I hope it was something helpful somehow. And I hope to see your creations and to see your dreams sometime soon. If you like it, if you want to see more, please like, subscribe, share, and that will give me all the energy to, you know, to put some more videos together. Um, and before I finish, I would like to say big thanks to uh, Serif for always being so supportive and with my career and inviting me to these creative sessions. Thank you so much. And remember, keep dreaming. <laughs>